everybody! Welcome to our channel and let's get straight to business of checking out new additions to our virtual collection. We tend to accumulate all kinds of fossils, but the petrified wood is what we like the most. So from time to time, we acquire serious pieces. And today, we have the pleasure of sharing some of them with you. We have two fabulous slabs of petrified wood and silicified spore cone from a plant akin to modern day horsetails. The first display piece is worthy of any natural history museum. It came from Arizona. Such a vivid coloration with dominating flamboyant red spots is a hallmark of petrified wood from Chinle formation dating back 200 million years ago. The type of tree is Araucaria, also known as a monkey puzzle tree. You can still find living Araucarias. Isolated patches of ancient Araucaria forests do exist in Argentina and Chile. This plant has scaly leaves and nutrient-rich seeds that supported the herbivore dinosaurs and other creatures during the Jurassic period. In fact, scientists hypothesize that long necks of sauropods were an adaptation allowing these dinosaurs to reach the young and soft branches of Araucaria trees. Preparation of a specimen of this size often involves stabilization. When the slab is treated with epoxy resin that fills tiny cracks and improves integrity of the rock, this particular petrified wood is very hard, and polishing it takes some effort. So, leaving one side unpolished makes sense. In our case, the surface, where epoxy was applied, is covered with felt, making it safe to put on various surfaces without being afraid of scratching them. The trunk of a petrified tree looks similar to a regular boulder, rough surface, not really showy at all, like many gems, by the way. Polishing is what brings out the fine features and bright colors. You can even see cell structures and tiny layers of agate formed in the space opened up by the cracks in the wood. Fun fact, in geology, boulders are rocks with a size larger than 10.1 inches in diameter. Everything smaller is called a cobble or pebble. Cobbles are between 2.5 and 10.1 inches in diameter. Using a combination of an eyepiece from a dissecting scope and a digital camcorder, we created a homemade video microscope, which will help us explore the surface of the slab from the edge to the middle and observe a variety of the spectacular microscopic patterns of this specimen. Such a fusion of cellular structures with layered mineral deposits is very unusual and leaves a strange feeling it's like biology and geology are blended together in a weird way. It also helps to understand how petrified wood is formed when chemical elements like iron, manganese, and copper diffuse into the organic tissue together with silica and grow as minerals inside it. If you have polished petrified wood in your collection, have you ever wondered what kind of beautiful microscopic visual delights your specimens hold? One more thing to check out is radioactivity. We firmly believe that every rock collector should have a Geiger counter and test the level of radioactivity of all specimens. You never know what kind of minerals a rock can accumulate during eons spent underground. The larger the piece, the more radioactive material it can contain. In our case, the average count was 16.6 events per minute, with 22 maximum. This is essentially in line with ambient levels in our residence, and two times lower than readings we've gotten from a megalodon tooth. The other specimens of petrified wood from Arizona that we tested did not really have much radioactive material in them, but remember, every specimen is unique. Let's move on to another interesting piece. It's a much smaller slab of Araucaria tree from Madagascar, the fourth largest island on the planet. It has a pale brown color and striking pattern of cracks. We used to think that petrified wood from Madagascar is boring, but recently many colorful slabs with attractive patterns started to appear. This section has practically intact cellular patterns. The layers inside the agate formed along the cracks in the wood are caused by changes in the conditions during deposition. It could be a reflection of a rainy season or series of volcanic ash fallouts or something else that was happening many, many millions of years ago, when the trunk of a fallen Araucaria tree was being petrified. 
buried in mineral-rich mud or ash. In a way, it resembles year rings on the wood, except that this particular tree was growing constantly in a warm tropical environment and did not form the rings. This is a silicified cone. Similar fossils become quite common after the deposits were discovered in the Western Sahara, supposedly dating back to the Eocene period. They are often mistaken for and sold as pine cones. In reality, it is not a pine cone, it's a spore cone, because instead of seeds, it bore spores of a primitive plant from the horsetail family. The fossil is called Equicalis strobus, and the word refers to stroboli, a scientific name used for the spore cones. Here is the lower part of the cone, where it was attached to the stem. It doesn't look like that in a pine cone, right? The cone consists of many hexagonally shaped sporangiophores. The scar in the middle of each sporangiophore is what's left of a leaf-like attachment that could have made a cone originally covered with brittle scales or spines, probably for protection. Hexagonal shield-like features are called ambo, by the way. This is a curious approximately 40 to 45 million years old rock and we decided to acquire it while the supplies last. Although we did see them being sold in large quantities, sometimes by buckets. But you probably will agree with me, there is no way it will go on forever. Thanks for watching. We are glad to be able to share our passion with you. Please consider sharing this video with your family, friends, and acquaintances, and do check other fossils and fossil hunting trips on the Koi channel. Stay curious and good luck!